Welcome to Insights. I'm Eric. Thanks for stopping by today. We're going to just talk about the matrix in general this morning. We're going to do this in the, in the matrix update, which I encourage everyone to at least uh, download a couple times a week to take a look at what's going on. But one of the things that we want to mention, we've made a few updates to some reports. We've updated the special report. We've updated the economy and stock report, talking about the direction of stocks in particular, whether or not We've seen a bottom. We saw a bottom potentially in September. We talk about how we identify that and how we're watching that. But again, none of this stuff is confirmed. Just because the computer is flagging cycles that are extended and that are uh, considered uh, classic opportunities within long-term cycles, of which uh, you can learn how to watch. Uh, you can learn how to do that when you watch those videos. Uh, but we don't want to go into detail here because we want to keep this one short. But in general, the evolution of the trade is very strict. It's a primary trend following technique. And you can see the primary trend counts here. These are all the bullish counts and these are all the bearish counts in terms of and they're defined in months. And these are the returns for those counts. There's been 41 winners so far with an average return of 48 percent or a gross return of that. Three, three losers at minus three. The average of the entire matrix is 44. The top five has produced a 204% return. With these types of counts, most of these returns are uh, in the top five are uh, restricted to energy, and many of them are on the short side, which most people are really not prepared for. And now the one short side for the VIX, which is the top one, that's why it's shaded green. If you lose that, you're going to lose the bear. You're going to lose the bull market that we see in stocks. It could go at any point in time. And one of the other observations that's pretty obvious is that the counts. This is the bullish count. If you're forcing a bullish position in anything, anywhere, whether it be here or in the trends tab, which is over here, and the same analysis and observation applies, there's so few observations of bullish counts. Uh, there's one here, CF Industries, which is reset. You can go take a look at that one, which is, you know, none of these are easy plays because everything is in the bear column. Everything over here is in the bear column, and the vast majority of the uh, assets inside of uh, the normal trends tab are in the bear column, and some of them are starting to flip over. You've got a one count in coffee, and we're going to probably talk about that in the coffee report at some point too. But the whole point is, is that if you're trying to be bullish, and you're, and the vast majority of the assets are in the bearish column, or if you're in down in here and you're trying to be bullish in any of these assets here. Whether it's a, uh, you know, this one's a primary trend flip in progress or this one's a bull. But if you're trying to be bullish uh, in or bearish in, against the primary trend, just like if you're trying to be bullish against a primary downtrend, or in this case, you're trying to be bearish against a primary uptrend, those are always dangerous combinations. And I can't say how dangerous that is. Enough so that I wouldn't, uh, when I've watched the matrix over the years, I, that's something I would never do. You never go against the primary trend. There's always another opportunity to get in and that forces you to the sidelines a lot. And that's not something people want to do. They want to be involved. Sometimes they, to the point where they can't sit in cash. Cash makes uh, an increasing amount with every uptick. Uh, every day that passes, cash is earning more. The dollar is rallying as well. Most people that trade in the United States are getting the appreciation of that currency. Outside the United States, you have, to, you have to account for that depreciation. You have to hedge it. But these are the observations that you have to make. We're not talking about any of the assets that are within, within the matrix itself. Just keep an eye, an eye on these counts. All these counts are on one side, just like we had mentioned. Even in the currency market, which I'll highlight right here quickly, all the counts are on the bear side, except for the dollar, which is on the bull side. And yet... People fought uh, the dollar rally tooth and nail when we established and said, Wait a second. I remember having this conversation a long time ago saying, hey, many of these counts, which were single digits, but they're all in the same column. Now, they are all concentrated, but concentrated in terms of the cycle points. We'll have to talk about those individually inside the dollar report, but they are all on the same side. And this is not going to turn bearish the dollar until you get these back over here and this one back over there. And it really doesn't matter what the energy bills say. The energy bills are a heads up. They're a heads up to, if you're long the dollar and you see an opposing energy bill or you see something that doesn't look right to take some profits. 
you don't take an energy bill that's uh, really a short a market or long a market and that's the primary trends are up or down in an energy bill to pose it and says well now now the primary trends ready to flip energy bills represent blocking domes or supporting structures and most of the times they slow the trends down to the upside or slow them down to the as as prices are falling but it takes a lot of energy and many builds in order to flip trends flip trends back up or flip them down and that's why you need confirmation and energy build alone is only a heads up one of the phases within the evolution of the trade is a nibble but really you can only nibble with the energy builds against primary trends that are displaying extreme uh, 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 primary trend decline or extreme age or cycle extension in terms of the primary trend in time these are all the red shaded boxes here they're all recorded primary trend decline one or two but specifically if you want to nibble you're looking for ptd2 over here anything that's extremely extended and it would have to be extended also in the long-term cycles and that brings in a bunch of ideas that's like well i want to nibble for example crude oil's primary trend which has been up for 19 months and a 62 percent return and say this energy build was, uh, it would have to be in a much different position. It would have to say it's like minus 60 and, and minus uh, 40 on the DI2. That could be permissible in terms of a nibble, which would be a play against the primary uptrend because the energy build is so strong and so bearish, but it's bearish against a primary trend that's super extended and very, very old. I see too many people stepping in and stepping in way too early in terms of trends that are old, but they're not old enough. What is an old trend? An old trend is at a time cycle and you can uh, you'd score them here, right there. An old trend would be the um, um, the 10 year at, at 21 months, it's 4.54. Now I wouldn't step in front of the treasury bond market because we're in the middle of a escalating sovereign debt, uh, uh, so sovereign debt crisis uh, across the globe and that's why uh, you just steer clear that doesn't mean this one should be nibbled in any shape or form at worst when this thing rallies you just step aside but you look through here and not many of the trends are even above two standard deviations just just one so one's a real official ptd2 and that's a candidate that, that you could buy uh, a bullish energy build against the, the decline. The energy build for the 10 year is uh, 76 and minus, or, or 76 minus 33 and minus 21. So the energy build doesn't even represent an, a, a point to nibble. So that is, that is a discussion. Remember there's, there are trends down here as well. None of them are old. The only one that's getting old in this, uh, in the additional uh, series that we, we track energy as well, is live cattle. But at 24 months, it's only 1.84. Needs to be extended, and extended is beyond two. Therefore, any energy bill that opposes the primary trend can't even be considered a nibble. All it really is is an opportunity to take some money off the table. But this can continue higher. Trends tend, as you can see, trends can push. This is a four standard deviation. I've seen two, two and a half. Those are what's normal. The, 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 the problem that's taking place in the US Treasury market and in the bond market is, is, is a part of the a brewing crisis that you can see uh, spinning out of the currency markets here. And you can see some of the pushes even in the currency markets are getting extended, not in terms of time, in terms of price, yes, but time, no, and that's why you can't step out of these trends even in the dollar index as well. If you have any comments or questions about the matrix or what we're doing, uh, give us a give us a uh, a note or let us know. Uh, these are things that you have to learn. This is all concepts within the evolution of the trade. You can't use this uh, the information inside the matrix, whatever. You, well, you can use it wherever you like to see. But if you're following the evolution of the trade, which is what the computer is doing right here when it's measuring uh, the number of bullish and bearish trades up here. It, these are primary trend counts. You want to get into them early. You want to get into them in a way that gets at least your foot into the door a little bit. Sometimes the primary trends work, sometimes they don't. Coffee, we'll talk about that one. Not every coffee flip is coffee's primary trends uh, flip stable. Uh, are, is there some uncertainty involved with them? You can go look that stuff up and those you use to adjust your risks when you follow the trend. But if coffee flips down and it's cotton just flipped down and uranium flipped down, 
these are all trends that you you, you don't want to be talking overall bullish uh, about without recognizing at least where the primary trend is. So if you have any questions, let us know. If not, thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you guys real soon.